It's called Al Hol, a camp that sprung from nowhere, now the size of a small town. The wind and sand mercilessly blow through the tents in the baking heat of the Syrian summer. But it's the anger, the seething hostility that strikes you. To step into this camp is to witness a strange mutation of the caliphate, kept alive by the widows and wives of ISIS. A spirit of vengeance seeps into the next generation. Hatred and enmity is magnified by the wretched conditions. See, you think it's a camp, yeah. but it's a prison. It's a place in limbo, like no other refugee camp on earth, shunned by the international community. Kurdish forces say this place is a ticking time bomb, an ISIS academy where its brutal ideology is incubating. They don't have the resources to keep control. Many of the women here don't know where their husbands and teenage sons are. They tell us quite openly they're teaching their children to hate the infidels who imprisoned and killed their fathers and brothers. The camp's population swelled while ISIS was making its last stand, not far from Al Hol. Many of the new arrivals had direct ties to ISIS. They were organized and quickly established their version of the moral police, terrorizing those who refused to wear the full veil. Beneath the black uniformity, some women want nothing more than to leave. I don't care if it's the Kurds or even the Americans who control my town, this woman pleads. But there is no reintegration program. This is an open-air prison. What do you want? I want to go home. Are you scared of, uh, from us? Should I be? I'm just asking. A lot of people, that's why they're talking in our countries, because they're scared to take us back. If they gave you an option, let's say, of creating a another caliphate for you? No. No? no. You're done? A lot of women, they think the same. But few countries are repatriating their nationals. The living conditions are horrendous. It's filthy. There's little access to medical care. Clean water is scarce. Food is rationed. A Telegram chat group has turned this place into a cause for ISIS, referring to it as the El Hol death camp, alleging atrocities by the pig enemies of Islam. There is a lot of propaganda here, a lot of promoting of the ISIS ideology, but then they're also using this platform to send messages. It's where they posted this video, the ISIS flag being raised inside the camp. That happened here, in a part of the camp for Syrians. It's a reaction to the psychological pressure on us, one woman says. They should know that more can be done than the raising of a flag. And more has been done. Foreign women here are no longer allowed to leave their annex and go to the market after two incidents when Kurdish guards were stabbed. The more radicalized women threaten and terrorize those less devoted to ISIS. One woman says her tent was burnt down. Another, that she's so afraid of being stabbed, she barely sleeps at night. Outside the camp, we get access to a prison, a surreal scene. Former ISIS fighters painting and crafting paper mache models. This man says ISIS held his family hostage to coerce him to join. ISIS gave me the bombs, he tells us, and then showed me on WhatsApp how to plant them. He's serving 20 years, the maximum sentence. In the crowded cell, some men say they never supported ISIS. Others accept their fate. The Kurds are doing their best to separate the true believers from the rest. In this rehabilitation center, there are scores of teenage boys. This 15-year-old was an ISIS fighter. His first mission? to plant explosives at a U.S. base. He describes how they were given the bombs, weapons, and suicide vests. 
We covered everything with the women's black niqab, he says, so the jets in the sky would not target us. The operation failed and he ended up in prison. But even there, ISIS ruled, he says. But at the rehab center, things are different. I've left ISIS behind, he tells us. It was a mistake. I learned from it. But the center barely reaches a fraction of the children indoctrinated. There just aren't enough resources. If the situation stays like this and nations don't help, ISIS will come back, Musab Khalaf, an administrator here, tells us. We hear about it, the sleeper cells. They take advantage of the children trying to recruit them. Mama, je vois. And the children are so vulnerable. They know nothing but conflict, destruction, and grief. Some have no parents, like this little boy. He's just visiting his friends here. His tent is somewhere else. And he says that his mom was killed, his dad has been detained, and it's just him and his siblings, the oldest of which is 16. Children pay the price for the sins of their parents, but in turn are preyed upon. There's only so much Kurdish officials can do to contain the situation. And there is a shocking lack of international involvement here. The place is forgotten, the legacy of yesterday's war. And that makes it uniquely dangerous. Because if allowed to fester, the sprawling camp contains the seeds of the next war and ISIS's revenge generation. Arwa Damon, CNN, Al-Hol Camp, Syria.